Greetings, this is Michael Early Wine, and I'm going to do a little thing on astrology here. I call it from the old Bambi film, Wake Up, Wake Up, Friend Owl. I think it was Thumper who said that to Friend, friend Owl, for those of us that can remember that. Anyway, looking, looking inward as to who we are, trying to figure it out, how deep do we go? How deep is that? Obviously, there's no end to it. And looking outward, outward as to where we are, we can do that because we're right here wherever we are on Earth, one planet in a solar system that is embedded in a system of local stars, which itself is embedded in an outer spiral arm of the galaxy that we call the Milky Way. And so we are very much right out in outer space. You know, we live in a galaxy far away, and we're traveling at incredible speeds, like the Earth is moving at 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. And our solar system itself is traveling around the center of our galaxy at 514,000 miles per hour. And it's unclear how fast our galaxy is traveling around its center, the local super galaxy. But in other words, we're not just standing still gazing at the moon. As for astrology, our Earth-centered, what's called the geocentric, you know, the traditional geocentric astronomical chart from which astrologers base all of, all of their uh, astrological understanding and meaning that chart is a view from Earth of our sun-centered solar system. Yet that chart, our Earth-centered chart, does not take into account the view of the solar system itself, much less our view of the local system of stars of which our sun is a member, much less our view of the galaxy itself, and so on. And so a view larger than our view of the solar system from Earth is not available to us from the Earth alone, which is not to say that our Earth-centered view is not useful. Of course it is. It's totally useful. And, and astrologers have used this for centuries as best as they can. Yet we do have to understand that some 500 years ago, when astrologer, astronomer, Nicholas Copernicus pointed out to the world that everything does not revolve around us. Everything does not revolve around the earth as we believed it did up until then. It's not all about us. Instead, Copernicus pointed out that the earth and our view from earth, in fact, revolves around the sun and not vice versa. Now, that's, this was not a little discovery. It's a big deal. And many astrologer astronomers back then had their minds blown. They suddenly had two very different astronomical charts on which to base their astrology. The familiar traditional geocentric Earth-centered chart and suddenly the new heliocentric Sun-centered chart. And these astrologer astronomers walked away from that event with two, well, the, astro the, astro the ones that became astronomers and they walked away from that event with two astronomical charts in their hands, a traditional Earth-centered geocentric chart that astrologers use today, but also the new sun-centered heliocentric chart. And this group of people became what today we call astronomers, who still firmly have both charts in mind. And we know that the two oldest academic disciplines are botany and astronomy. And these are solid and respective vocations. 
On the other hand, those astrologer astronomers from the time of Copernicus who, who rejected the new sun-centered heliocentric chart and continued to believe that everything revolves around Earth, and they believe that it's all about and only about Earth, these astrologers, and, and their view from Earth, they went another way entirely. Astrologers, for the most part, still hold this view because they do not and have not even begun to learn to interpret the heliocentric sun-centered chart. Even when they do, they treat it like the traditional uh, zodiac chart. I mean, uh, uh, just the regular uh, Earth-centered chart. In a word, astrologers, and this is true for astrologers today, have not and have never taken the empowerment and the initiation of the sun-centered heliocentric view to heart. I mean, it was a big deal. It changed the, changed the world of these people, the whole view. But astrologers, even today, still resist it, the heliocentric chart, by their continued ignorance of it. I'm surprised that astrologers have not taken a good look at astronomers and put two and two together, but they seem unable to do that. And so that's about the size of it. Astrologers not only don't know or use the heliocentric chart, but many of them also mock the heliocentric and say things like, we don't live on the sun, so why would a heliocentric chart have any use to us? You know, I don't know what to tell them. These astrologers should ask modern astronomers what they gained from the heliocentric perspective because that was the only difference between them and the astrologer astronomers back then who ignored, the, ignored Copernicus' discovery that everything does not revolve around us, around Earth. And they remained astrologers only, and they no longer think of themselves as astronomers. This simple fact, the reversal and awareness that everything, including the sun, did, did not revolve around Earth, was not without its consequences. It was a change of view, but one that had far-reaching import for all of us. And, in, and this is harder to communicate. It was also an empowerment, you know, almost a spiritual thing, a mind change that altered our traditional Earth perspective, that the solar system, everything we knew in space, revolved around us. Copernicus pointed out that, in fact, we here on Earth revolve around the sun and not vice versa. Anyway, astronomers got that, and they made the adjustment, and they transmigrated their view and their identification with that the sun revolved around us. Not true. We were we revolve around the sun. You know, what a profound change in view. Now, and also, nothing physical changed, just that view. But it made all the difference in the world that existed at that time, and that difference still exists now. As for me, I, I, I went through this empowerment myself as I discovered on my own that the heliocentric view was the mother the mother chart. In the earth chart, the earth view was the child. And with that discovery, I stopped identifying exclusively, exclusively with the geocentric earth-centered chart and suddenly had, as did the astronomers centuries before me, two charts in my hands, two views of who I am and why I'm here. And this is at least for me, like a 3D view of who I, who I am and why I'm here. These two charts, the geocentric, the traditional astrology chart, and the heliocentric allow triangulation, which, which results in an increased, almost 3D-like perspective. Over time, with decades of study on my part, I came to understand that the heliocentric chart is a chart of our own dharma, 
our true path in life. While the geocentric chart, the traditional astrology chart, is a map of our karma and the circumstances in which we, our true path or archetype, find ourselves embedded in this life. And the two charts work together like hand and glove to give us a multi-dimensional view of who we are and why we are here. I can't explain why astronomers are not singing the same tune that I am, interpreting the heliocentric chart. Keep in mind that the traditional geocentric chart used by astrologers for centuries is also just an astronomical chart, a chart of the solar system as seen from Earth. Astrology is, in a word, cultural astronomy, an attempt to interpret and give meaning to astronomy and astronomical events and nothing more than that. Astronomy is exact, precise, while with the astrology, which is supposed to be about what these astronomical events mean, not so exact, not so much done, actually. The meaning of life and the meaning of astronomy is much more difficult to figure out. The astronomers of today are content with astronomy being it is what it is, and they don't attempt to give meaning to astronomical events. However, I believe they should at least try, and perhaps they eventually will. Perhaps they just leave it to religion to do that. And astrologers today, as backward as they can appear in this light, have only to take the heliocentric empowerment as astronomers did centuries ago and change their view. That's it. If that happened, astrology would be a powerhouse. This has to be beginning to happen because it's not like there's an alternative. The Earth orbits the Sun and not vice versa. And the heliocentric chart, how our, the view of our whole solar system is extremely important for us to understand. Anyway, that's my two cents. And as I pointed out, as Bambi's friend Thumper said to Mr. Owl, wake up, wake up, friend Owl. <laughs>